if the last thing you saw her was when she was laying in bed when she was alive and kind of having makeup run down her face, um, obviously that wouldn't be, you wouldn't know where she is, right? Because obviously right now we can't find her. Does that make sense mm -hmm. to you? Do all those questions make sense to you? Yes. So what, what would you answer to all of those questions? I had n nothing to do with what's going on right now. I did not physically harm her. Okay. I did, the last time I saw her was in bed, laying on her side with some mascara on her face after we had a conversation. And I do not know where she is right now. Okay. That was it. Yep. Okay. So you nailed them perfectly. Um, who do you think would have hurt Shanann and the girls? Like, who um, do you think would have done something to them? Honestly, it was like we've exhausted like every option that we have of people that know. Like, even if it's kind of crazy, like, what is your one go-to like thought about what could have happened? That. It's somebody I don't know, and I don't know who they are or what they're about, and that they have her and the kids, and that they're not safe right now, and that they've been physically hurt. Okay. So, obviously, like I said, we kind of have to expect the worst and hope for the best. Um, if we do end up finding your wife and your two girls murdered, what do you think should happen to that person that would have done that? worst possible thing. Like what? I mean, it's either going to be like life in prison or the death penalty, isn't it? And that's the only two things you really can do. I think that's the only thing you really, is that, that's the only penalty you have. I mean, there's some people that are like, well, obviously that person's really screwed up and maybe they deserve some, you know. Yeah, I, 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 just, I just know because it's, it's my, my wife and my kids, so like, from a neutral perspective, then it's be different. Mm -hmm. That's my wife and kids. Okay. Do you know anything else about, I mean, is there anything you haven't told detectives that you want to share with us today? No, I mean, we've, we've exhausted every option of trying to reach out to friends and family that may have seen her or heard from her. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we, we have like nothing really else to like go off of right now as far as like, who could have her or where she could be. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to have you take a bath and break. Thank We've you. been in here quite a while. <laughs> I need one as well. Um, let me find out which bathroom you're actually supposed to use. Hopefully one of them will come in here and, and help us um, figure out which bathroom. And then we're going to come back in here and then again I'm going to tell you how and why the polygraph works and we're just going to get kind of into the testing and right. that's cool with you. Okay? Because you can already know what the questions are that I care about. So, okay? Alright, so let me see yeah. if someone can direct you to the bathroom real quick. Okay. Hey, Kirk. Yes. Why don't you, um, I'll just take you out to the lobby, and then I'll just have you sit right there real quick, and then I'll come grab you. So you have this here? Oh, you can take it with you, whatever. It's right in your pockets. Wow.
presentación. Catering? Oh, good. Thank Are you, you sure? Yeah. I figured maybe you want something. Uh, water? Uh, oh, maybe. <laughs> maybe? Okay. Do you want a Mountain Dew? Oh, no, no Mountain Dew. <laughs> you stay away from that stuff? I haven't had a soda in like years. Well, don't start now. Right? you have any bad habits? Uh, I used to. Like Oreos and soda were my, my go-to. During the pregnancy? Yep. What kind of soda did you like? Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew tea? That's what I like. Them. Everyone oh. at work makes fun of me for drinking it. No, uh, like my favorite was like the Baja Blast Mountain Dew. Oh, see, I didn't like that. Because don't they still have that at Taco, um, Bell. Taco Bell? That's where it was. That's right. Oh, uh, it's fake quesadilla and Mountain Dew Baja Blast is my go to. Uh, let's go over the questions that are going to be on the test. Is that cool with you? Yeah. Just so you know the words to all the questions and. There's no surprises and that kind of stuff, okay? Am, and then I, we'll am I allowed to like breathe like during this? Or yeah, like? I'll explain all of that to you. It's um, you're obviously still a person and you still have functions that have to go on for you to be alive. So, mm -hmm. yes, you have to. You'll be able to breathe, and we just don't want you to move a bunch during okay. the test. And I'll explain that to you. And it's for very short periods of time. And I have no doubt, being a healthy guy like you are, that you'll have no problem doing that. Correct. Okay. okay. I've had like 15 year old boys up to like 85 year old men that are able to sit still just during the polygraph. So okay. I have no doubt someone like you is more than able to sit still. Okay. Okay, so we're going to go over the questions that are going to be on the test. Like I said, I'm going to tell you every single question. There's not a question I'm just going to add, you know, for the thrill of it or anything like that. You're going to know all the work. So the first question that's going to be on the test is going to be regarding Shanann's disappearance. Do you intend to answer all of the questions truthfully? Yes. Okay. And you're only going to get to answer yes or no to these questions, okay? Oh, okay. So it's easy because, you know, you, there, there should be no question in your mind whether you need to answer yes or no to the questions, okay? Um, so the first uh, relevant question that I'm going to ask um, that we had already gone over is going to be, did you physically cause Shanann's disappearance? No. <coughs> Are you lying about the last time you, you saw Shanann? No. And I'm saying her name right Yep. Right? Okay. And then do you know where Shanann is now? No. Okay. So those are the three that we'd already discussed before, right? So physically causing someone's disappearance is either, you know, obviously harming them to the point where they, you know, are either dead or can no longer um, function out, you know, maybe you left them for dead, you know, in some field somewhere or something like that. Um, so maybe they weren't actually deceased, but, you know, that you would have been the ca direct cause of their disappearance, okay? So mm -hmm. that makes sense to yeah. you? Okay. And then obviously, lying about the last thing you saw her, mm -hmm. that would be because maybe you helped someone or you did it yourself or something like that, and then you helped dispose of them or put them somewhere or lock them up somewhere or whatever, okay? Okay. And then, uh, knowing where she is now. And again, that would be either some kind of direct knowledge. Like you either saw it, you did it, you know where you put them, or someone told you where they are, or something like that. Or if Shanann called you and said, this is where I'm at, but you haven't told the police that. That kind of stuff, okay? Does that make sense? That makes sense. Okay. So you're going to be taking what's called a directed lie polygraph. So what that means is there are going to be test questions on the test where I want you to lie. Because I want to see what your body looks like when you tell a lie on the test. Okay. okay. I know it seems kind of weird, but you're going to know which questions these are and they're going to be easy to answer. So it's going to be like, um, 
they're all going to start with before 2018. So this first one is before 2018. Did you ever lose your temper with someone you cared about? We've all lost our temper with someone we've cared about in our life. So I want you to think about, you don't have to tell me what it is, but I want you to actually have that moment in your mind when you actually lost your temper with someone you cared about. Okay. Whether it was with Shanann, whether it was with your parents, whether it was with your children, I mean it could be with anyone, but it was You're ready to say no to that one? Yes, so you're going to actually lie to that question, since okay. we all have lost our temper with someone we've cared about okay. in the before. So I'm going to say before 2018, did you ever lose your temper with someone you cared about? And you're going to say? No. Because you're telling a? Why? Awesome. The next one of those, because there's only three of those, the next one's going to be before 2018. Remember, it's all going to start with that, before 2018. Do you ever hear that on a, the test? That is your clue to go, crap, this is a question I have to lie to on the test. Okay? Okay. So this one's going to be before 2018. Did you ever say anything out of anger to a loved one? It's, it's going to be... Well, we've all said something yeah. out of anger okay. to a loved one, but so I want you to take a minute and actually think of a time when you've actually said something out of anger to a loved one. Do you have okay. something in your head? Yeah. Okay. And I want you to actually think of that when you answer this question on the test. Okay. So again, before 2018, did you ever see anything out of anger to a loved one? You're going to say? No. Because you're telling a? Lie. Awesome. The last one is before 2018, have you ever wanted to hurt someone to get even with them? Not that you actually hurt them, but that maybe they pissed you off so bad, you know, that you were like, oh, I can punch that guy in the face right now, or, you know, whatever. Not that you actually ended up even hurting anyone, but that you ever thought about hurting someone to get even with them. So I want you to mm -hmm. take a moment and think about a time, and just make sure that you do have something in your head. Okay. Got it? So when I ask you this question on the test, before 2018, have you ever wanted to hurt someone to be even with them? You're going to say? No. Because you're telling a lie. Awesome. Um, the next questions are, the, are what we call known truth questions. They're going to be really easy to answer. So it's going to be, is your first name Christopher? Yes. Good. Were you born in 1985? Yes. Are you now in the state of Colorado? Yes. Are you now sitting down? Yes. Are the lights on in this room? Yes. Do you understand that I will only ask you the questions we have discussed? That's the last yes. question. Okay. So we just went through every single question on the test. Okay. So the only questions that you'll hear come out of my mouth. Okay. So let me go through those one more time and you just say yes or no how you would answer them on the test. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Regarding Shanann's disappearance, do you intend to answer all the questions truthfully? Yes. Uh, did you physically cause Shanann's disappearance? No. Are you lying about the last time you saw Shanann? No. Do you know where Shanann is now? No. <clears throat> Before 2018, did you ever lose your temper with someone you cared about? No. Before 2018, did you ever say anything out of anger to a loved one? No. Before 2018, have you ever wanted to hurt someone to get even with them? No. Okay. Is your first name Christopher? Yes. Were you born in 1985? Yes. Are you now in the state of Colorado? Yes. Are you now sitting down? Yes. Are the lights on in this room? Yes. Do you understand that I will only ask you the questions that we have discussed? Yes. Okay. That's it. Any of those questions give you any heartburn or make you go, well... Not just my, my heart's kind of I'm still like, nerd, like, is this whole like... Right. Right. And this is not a like process that where you shouldn't be nervous so yeah. that is to be expected that's yeah. totally fine and like I told you before that's not going to cause you to fail the test or anything like that because okay. no one would take the test if that's what it went off of okay okay that's just this is sort of what I feel right now so it's like I don't know like did you do any research on polygraph or no like, like that? okay no like I don't all I know is like when I when I see it on TV I, all I see is like you know this right here and then like that, and then like that, <laughs> it's like, well you just judge it off your heart rate, or what? what is the deal? Yeah, and I'll explain all those components that I'm going to put on you. So I know, like, I mean, I came in here, my heart's going a million miles a minute, and it hasn't stopped. Yeah, so, and you'll notice, too, that um, the second, the second I put all the components on you, that's when it really feels like, oh shit, it just got real. Like, that's just... Everyone has that oh shit moment, right, when everything gets attached because yeah. then you're like, oh crap. So I promise I, 
I will get you through this, okay? Give me just one sec. Have you um, ever been pulled over before? Yes. Okay, good. Had a Mustang. Oh, I bet you were pulled over a lot. Mm. A handful. <laughs> okay. So I kind of explain polygraph in a way that makes the most sense to me. So I'm, I just assume it makes the most sense to other people. Okay. So just bear with me. Um, I like to ask people um, about a time that they got pulled over, you know, um, and how they felt when they realized they were getting pulled over by the police. You know, that moment when you're crossing a hill, you see a cop on the side of the road, or um, you know, you go around a corner, there's a cop there, or all of a sudden you see red and blue flashing lights in the rear view mirror. And I usually ask people, I'm like, just describe how you felt when you realized you were getting pulled over by the police. And it's kind of right, right, right now. It feel, you know, most people have the heart beating out of the chest, they kind of start hyperventilating, some people get mad, some people get sad. Well, all the things that are happening inside your body when you realize you're getting pull, pulled over by the police are actually being regulated by your autonomic nervous system. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. It kind of sounds like automatic because that's basically what it is. Whenever your brain senses that you're in a stressful or threatening situation, it automatically kicks in these physiological changes inside your body because it thinks it needs to help keep you alive, okay? Have you heard of fight, flight, or freeze mm -hmm. before? So, <coughs> excuse me, Chris, you're walking in the woods, you hear a bear growl, you're either going to fight the bear, you're going to freeze, or you're going to run away. Okay? Yeah. It's kind of your brain going, you're in overload right now, you can't really process what's happening. So I'm going to give you three options to help keep you alive, okay? So a lot of people are like, well, what the hell does that have to do with telling a lie? Well, I'm sure you would agree from a very young age, your father taught you, you know, that it's wrong to lie, cheat, or steal. Would you agree with that? Yes. And that there's consequences when you lie, cheat, or steal. Would you agree with that? Yes. So if I ask you a question, Chris, and I say, did you do whatever, and the word no comes out of your mouth, your brain will automatically sense that as a stressful or threatening situation because it knows there's consequences with that lie you just told. The severity of it, it really doesn't matter to your brain. I mean, it, you could get grounded Friday night or you could spend the rest of your life in prison. It, your brain really di can't really differentiate between the severity of the consequence. It just knows, holy cow, you told a lie, there's consequences with those lies, and it starts those same physiological changes inside your body, okay? The same things that were happening when you heard the bear growl in the woods and the same things that were happening when you realized you were getting pulled over by the police, okay? okay. So the awesome thing about the polygraph is I get to measure what's going on inside your body when you're answering questions on the test, okay? And I do that by attaching um, these components to you, okay? And okay. I'll explain those um, here in just a minute. Um, and I've already told you on the test, like you're going to have questions on the test where I know you're telling a truth. Like, is your name Chris, first name Christopher? Mm -hmm. um, and I have questions on the test where I know you're telling a lie about hurting, ever saying anything, hurt a loved one, or, you know, those types of questions. So I get to see what your body looks like on the inside when I know you're telling a truth, and I know you're telling a lie, and then I get to compare that to the relevant questions about the, um, if you physically caused Shanann's disappearance, uh, if you're, are you lying about the last thing you saw her, and if you know where she is now. And I get to compare those to those questions. Does that make sense to you? And I felt like I felt, I don't know if this was, uh, the, heart, the heartbeat thing, that's the only thing that I thought it was measure, measured off of. No, and just so you know, like, a lot of people are like, well, my heart's beating out of my chest. You are your own baseline. Like, I'm not comparing you against the guy I did last week or, you know, um, someone I did 10 months ago. So if your heartbeat is up here, that's just where you're at. Like, that's your baseline for me today, okay? And then when you react, you're just going to react up here. Someone who's a little more calm or, you know, maybe they, you know, they're, don't, you know, their heart's obviously not beating as fast. They're going to be, their baseline's maybe going to be down here, but they're going to have that same reaction. Does that make sense? So mm -hmm. you're both going to have the same reaction. You're just going to have different baselines, okay? okay. So I'm going to explain to you the components as I'm putting them on because I think it makes the most sense, but I do need to kind of move your chair a little bit. And I'm going to actually have you... I, can we set these down on the floor like yeah, next to you? Is that cool? I'm going to move your water just a little bit. Just because I'm going to put your arm up here in a minute. Okay. And you can have a seat back. Okay. Down. So the first thing that we're going to put on, Chris, is these are called pneumograph tubes. Okay. The blue one's going to go kind of down by your belly. The mm -hmm. silver one goes up a little higher underneath your armpits, okay? These are okay. going to measure involuntary movements in your chest cavity during the test, okay? So what I need you to do is put your hands together like you're diving in a swimming pool. Put your wrist on top of your head. On top of your head. Sorry. That's okay. And then just lean forward slightly so your back's off the back of the chair. Perfect. And I'll try not to laugh you in the face. 
And if at any time like this feels too tight or whatever, just let me know, okay? Good. And I can adjust it for you. Pretty skinny though. So I want to make sure it's not going to fall down too far. And put your hands up. I'm going to do the silver one.
So this is the direct of my practice test. So what that means is I'm going to ask you if you wrote every single number on this piece of paper. Okay? Okay. I want you to be truthful to all the numbers, but I want you to lie to when I ask you if you wrote the number three. Because okay. you really did write the number three, but I want you to say no, that you did not. I want you to lie to me, okay? Okay. So let's practice that. Regarding that number you wrote on the piece of paper, did you write the number one? No. Did you write the number two? No. Good. Did you write the number three? Mm, yes. No, I didn't. No. You're lying to that one. Okay, I didn't, I didn't write That's okay. All right, did you write the number four? No. Did you write the number five? No. Okay, so let's do that. try that one more time, okay? Regarding the number on the piece of paper, did you write the number one? No. Did you write the number two? No. Did you write the number three? No. It's good. Did you write the number four? No. Did you write the number five? No. Good. So in essence, you're saying no to every single number that I asked you about if you wrote, but obviously you're lying when you say you didn't write the okay. number three because we just both watched you write the number three, okay? okay. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay, so during the testing, I'm going to leave this right here. You need to look in the area of this clipboard. You can't look side to side, up, down, wherever Chris wants to look. You don't have to fixate on the number three, but you're going to be looking basically in this general area right here, okay? okay. You do have to remain completely still. There's no coughing, belching, sneezing, sniffling, anything like that during the test, okay? Just breathing. What's that? Just breathing. Just, yes. I need you to breathe <laughs> so it keeps you alive, yeah. Um, so, you need to remain, a lot of people are like, well, I didn't know how to be still like a statue. You pretty much have to be still like a statue. Like I said, it's for very short periods of time. Okay. I will, um, if for some reason I have to give you an instruction during the test, like maybe you're moving your little finger and you don't even notice it because it, it's kind of like a little thing that you're doing and you don't really realize you're doing it, just fix whatever I've asked you to fix and do not go, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, do not apologize, do not move, do not do anything. I'll know already that you feel horrible about what you just did. I just don't need you to acknowledge it, okay? I just need you to actually fix whatever I asked you to fix. Like, see, you just picked up your little, your finger over there. If I say, don't move your finger, I don't need you to go, I'm so sorry. And you know, that kind of stuff. Sorry. Exactly. So, and that's totally fine. I'm just saying, if I if I point something out like that, just ever just stop what, doing whatever I'm asking you to do, okay? Does that make okay. sense to you? Mm -hmm. um, during the test, you cannot look at me. I will be staring at you just to make sure all the components are staying where they're supposed to. I know it feels super creepy to have someone staring at you when you can't stare back. No, that's fine. But that's just kind of the name of the game today. Okay. Okay. Do you have any questions? No, like, I'll try not to sneeze or burp or anything like that. Yeah. Or yeah. laugh or anything like this. Right here, so. Can you put your whole hand on the table? Is that okay for yeah. you? Is that cause you any? No, I just want to make sure they can get in that way. Yeah, no, you're good. If you could just stick your whole hand on there just so I could see it, that'd be perfect. Um, there is no talking during the test. The only talking you used to do is to say yes or no. Um, sometimes people have a problem. Can you look at me right now? Oh, sorry. sorry. I'm, I'm just no, practicing. You're, you're, I'm like, practicing. you're like in the zone. I'm practicing, sorry. That's okay. So when I ask you a question, and you, a lot of people have you know, an automatic reaction to go yes, no. They move their head. Yes. So just be conscious about the fact that your whole body, including your head, needs to be completely still. The only movement that's actually going to happen from your body is your mouth to open to say yes or no. But your head should stay still. So try it. So if I tell you, you know, if I have to give you instruction, like stop nodding your head or something like that, just stop and just open your mouth and say the word instead of moving your head, okay? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? And I, like I said, I know most people don't do that on purpose and they're not realizing that they're doing it until I point it out to them. So if I do that, just see if you can fix that for me, okay? Um, there is no air in your cuff right now. I will over inflate your cuff when we start. It will feel like your leg's going to fall off for just a brief second. Kay. And then I let almost all the air out and then I pump it up about halfway. And that just gets all the air bubbles out for me and gives me a nice clean reading on the chart, okay? okay. Do you have any questions? That's, that's it. Okay, so make sure that um, also that I ask the question in its entirety before you answer. Okay. Um, Especially with the numbers, people already know what number's coming next. So sometimes I'll say, did you write the number? No. And they cut me off. Mm -hmm. There has to be a delineation between the time I end the question and the time you answer. So just make sure that you're not doing that for me, okay? Okay. So give me one second. I have to make a file name here.
So I will tell you when the test is going to begin, and then I will tell you when the test is going to end. Don't move in between that time, and then I will tell you at the end when it's okay for you to move around and relax, okay? Okay. So just stay completely like you are until I tell you that it's okay, okay? Okay. Does that bother you? No, I'm just trying there. to keep from, like, stressing my fingers out. Yeah, don't. Just, like, seriously, just kind of, like, like your hand is on your lap, just lay your hand right there. Okay. They're allowed to still, they need to be at least flat, though, right? I mean, it just, just, like, lay on the table. All right. So, are they, do they not, nor would they not normally be touching? Well, it's just, like, I don't know. It's, it's fine. Okay. And, again, you're going to be looking straight ahead. Just make sure you don't move, okay? Okay. The test is about to begin. Please remain still. Regarding what number you wrote on the piece of paper, did you write the number one? No. Did you write the number two? Oh. Did you write the number three? No. Did you write the number four? No. Did you write the number five? No. This portion of the test is complete. Please remain still while I take the instrument out of operation. Okay, you can relax. How'd you feel? You did great. That was you remembered the lie and everything. That was awesome. That was <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> you obviously are a really bad liar. Has, have people told you that before? Like the second mm -hmm. you tell a lie, like they can tell like on your face that because the second you lied to the number three, like I don't know if you heard me clicking, but I had to like turn down the sensitivity because you were starting to go off the page. So that is what I need to see as a polygrapher because that tells me that you know what's wrong to tell a lie. 
um, and you're actually having a significant reaction when you lie, so that is awesome. So thank you for being a horrible okay, liar. I, I no, that's a good I'm thing. That's a good thing. We don't want to be good liars, so thank you for being a horrible liar. Um, and that just shows me that, you know, obviously on the test when we're asking, you know, significant stuff about your wife, um, if you're lying to that, it's going to be even ten times more ampl amplified. So. I oh, appreciate I that. Didn't. I appreciate that very much, more than you know. So that was awesome. So let me get um, the questions to the test up. If you want to take a drink of your water, just to kind of. Never mind. You're good. Yeah. Okay. So um, do you have any other questions about the questions of the test? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to ask these such a questions. We have to ask them at least three times. So we call them charts. So we have to do at least three charts. Um, um, we can do up to five charts depending on, you know, if you're not giving me good data for some reason or you're moving or something like that. We could do up to five charts, okay? So hopefully we'll get them done in three. That's what my hope is. Um, and I, I imagine we will get them done in three. So, okay. And the coolest thing about this is right now there's only one person in this room that knows what the truth is. And in about five minutes there's going to be two of us. So that's the coolest part, okay? And then I can go share that with them out there, okay? Kay. So do you, you don't have any other questions or anything? No. Perfect. So you don't want to take a shit before we start? Oh well. <laughs> know when you're ready to begin. Um, during this part of the test, I want you to focus on the back of the chair, okay? Not looking up, down, okay. side to side, anything like that. I want you to do that. Was I doing that? Nope, you did okay. great. You, But the, obviously the clipboard is gone now, so your area of focus is going to be like in this area, okay? Okay. Don't like focus on something so intense that you um, end up you know, kind of going cross-eyed. Like, oh. just, don't, just make sure you don't do that, okay? Just kind okay. of look, look around, like, right in that area, okay? Do you remember okay. those questions that you have to lie to? Uh, and before 2018. Right. And you remember you're going to tell a lie to those questions? Yes. You're going to say no? I'm going to say no to lie. anything that says before 2018, as regards to before 2018. Right. And you're going to think about the lies yeah. that you're telling, right? Yeah, after you after you ask the full question, yes. Yep, perfect. All right, you ready? Let's do it. Okay, stay still. about to begin. Please remain still. understand I will only ask you the questions we have discussed. Yes. Regarding Shanann's disappearance, do you intend to answer all of the questions truthfully? Yes. Is 
your first name, Christopher? Yes. Pretty normal. Before 2018, did you ever lose your temper with someone you cared about? No. Did you physically cause Shanann's disappearance? No. Were you born in 1985? Yes. Before 2018, did you ever say anything out of anger to a loved one? No. Are you lying about the last time you saw Shannon? No. Are you now in the state of Colorado? Yes. Before 2018, have you ever wanted to hurt someone to be even with them? No. Do you know where Shanann is now? No. portion of the test is complete. Please remain still while I take the instrument out of operation. Relax. How do you feel? Horrible. Horrible? Nervous. Yeah? It's like trying to look at something without nothing there.
the chair thing. Yeah. Yeah. I know it gets kind of weird. Like that's why yeah. I would always tell people not to try to go like outside. I don't know. Must be mm, trying to keep everything still. Do you feel like you're in a good position right now? Yeah. Or just kind of sitting and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I feel like it's okay. Okay. Just not used to this. Do you have any issues with the questions as far as you physically causing Shanann's disappearance? Is there anything that you are like? I don't like how that question is, you know, worded. Maybe you know. No. Um, does it cause you? Or you know exactly what I'm talking about? I know. Yeah. I mean. like, yeah. Like I'm. I'm there. Okay. And as far as um, the last time you saw her, you know, I'm talking about in the bed yeah. when you saw her makeup coming mm -hmm. out her face, and then if you know where she is now, yeah. having direct knowledge of mm -hmm. where she would be at this moment. Okay. Okay. So. Do you want to take some drink of water, or are you ready to start the second turn? Take some water. Okay. You probably want that Mountain Dew now, mm. don't you? <laughs> I made everything like. <laughs> yeah. You feel good like that? Yep, I'm pretty good. <clears throat> good with that. But Ready? Yep. I'm going to move some of this up just a tad. There we go. During this test, on the last test, um, you're breathing really funky. So please just try and do normal breaths, okay? We can't have deep breaths or you know, oh, stuff oh, like deep that. Oh, deep breath. Okay, mm -hmm. sorry. So that's okay. Just breathe as normal as possible, okay? Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. All right, you ready? Yep. Okay. Is this bothering you? No, you're fine. I just kind of get my hand the way right. Okay. So we're going to get started, so stay still. about to begin. Please remain still. Do you understand that I will only ask you the questions we have discussed? Regarding Shanann's disappearance, do you intend to answer all of the questions truthfully? Yes. Are you now in the state of Colorado? Yes. Before 2018, have you ever wanted to hurt someone to get even with them? No.
Are you lying about the last time you saw Shanine? No. First name Christopher? Yes. Before 2018, did you ever lose your temper with someone you cared about? No. Do you know where Shanann is now? No. Were you born in 1985? Yes. Before 2018, did you ever say anything out of anger to a loved one? No. Normal. Did you physically cause Shanann's disappearance? No. Portion of the test is complete. Please remain still. I take the instrument out of operation. You can relax. I think we should be able to get in one more chart, um, but I really need your breathing to be normal. Okay, I'm you sorry. are like all sorry. over the place. So. I'm sorry. That's okay. Like sometimes I feel like I'm not breathing enough, and I'm like, uh, like that. I don't want to do that. So. Yeah. Yeah. I just need it as normal as possible and not okay. fluctuated, okay? Okay. Sorry about that. That's okay. I just want to be able to get it done for you in one more chart instead of two, three more. So, yeah. yeah I don't want that. No, you don't want that. You tell me when you... Okay, I know I sound like a broken record, but I have to ask you again. Okay. Any issues with those questions on the test? No. You know exactly what I mean when I ask yeah. you about physically causing yeah. your disappearance, last time you saw Shanann, mm -hmm. and um, if you know where she is now. Okay. No question about those? No. Okay. So 
good? Yep. Okay. Good. We're gonna get started for space fill. She's about to begin, so you should remain still. Do you understand that I will only ask you the questions?